What's going on guys? Onami Protocol is building a multi-chain DEX designed to provide an interface between traditional finance and DeFi. Their goal is to bring Forex markets on chain, which will be massive considering this is a $6.6 .6 trillion per day market. Could you imagine the fees from $6.6 .6 trillion in volume every single day? How could this even remotely be possible though? If you're like me, you're probably a bit skeptical right off the bat, so let's get into this one. From the main page, they say, get the centralized exchange experience on chain. To sum up what I think they mean by this, trading on centralized exchanges is often much cheaper and faster than trading in DeFi. Although with projects like Thorchain implementing streaming swaps, that is changing. The benefit of DeFi is that you don't have to worry about third party custody risks and you always keep control of your assets most of the time. If you think custody risk isn't a big deal, you're likely maybe just new to crypto and weren't there to experience the BlockFi, Celsius and FTX collapse, but I assure you custody risk is a big deal. On top of usually being faster and cheaper, centralized exchanges offer more tools like charts and order books so you can set limit orders and put in stop losses on your trades. Some of this is possible in DeFi. I've seen it around on PancakeSwap, for example, but the user experience is nowhere close to what you can get on a centralized exchange and tradable assets are usually pretty limited. So the goal of creating a centralized exchange experience on chain is an ambitious goal for sure. More into the tech side of things. Onami Protocol is a layer one blockchain built with the Cosmos SDK, which puts it in good company along with other prominent chains, at least at the time I'm recording this video, like Thorchain, Kujira, and Injective. So the underlying tech seems pretty sound. One major feature of Cosmos tech is the IBC protocol, which stands for Inner Blockchain Communications, which if enabled, allows all the Cosmos chains to talk to each other. But Cosmos chains are also relatively faster and way cheaper than something like Ethereum or Bitcoin, who, in my opinion, might struggle onboarding new users in the coming bull run due to the gas fees. But we'll see how that plays out. At the core of the project is the ARC hub, which is their multi-chain bridge. And it is a bi-directional bridge, so you can go both ways depending on which chain you are starting from. And this bridge is not going to be built on top of the Onami protocol like you might be assuming. All of their core products, the bridge, the stablecoin protocol, and the exchange will all have their own separate app chain in the Cosmos ecosystem, but sticking with the bridge for now. When mainnet launches, the bridge will work with Cosmos Hub, Osmosis, Ethereum, and OKX chain. Although they do have some that are already in testnet and others that they are planning on as well. Bridges are very high risk as we've seen in the past with all the hacks and exploits, but they say ARC is completely non-custodial with no central intermediary or third-party administrators that could run off with the funds. The bridge is secured through the Onami Validator Guild, which is made up of the entire validator set. So it's not like a three out of five multi-sig or anything like that. The whole validator set is the multi-sig. So the only way for the bridge to be compromised would be the collusion of, I'm guessing, at least half or a little bit more than half of the validators. Although right now there are only 12 active validators, so let's hope they get those numbers up. Fortunately, it is permissionless to become a validator, although you have to self-stake a minimum of 225,000 NOM tokens, which at the time I'm recording this video would be around $60,000. And that 225,000 NOM minimum might explain why the validator set is so low right now. Back to the ARC bridge. On the website, they say the bridge will facilitate native cross-chain trades with integrated blockchains. There are two other products that they have that are going to be looking to launch soon as well. You've got Onex, which is the Onami exchange, and Orez, the Onami Reserve, which is where the creation of the stable coins is gonna happen. Onex will launch first shortly after Christmas this year with a snapshot taken on Christmas day in order to airdrop some of the Onyx tokens to the NOM stakers. So maybe a little bit of alpha if this is interesting to you and you're interested in airdrop hunting. It's gonna be a multi-chain DEX with AMM liquidity pools and an order book model for trading cryptos with foreign exchange pairs where you can create limit orders, put in stop orders, and it's gonna have all of those advanced charting features we talked about that generally come with a centralized exchange. 
So that's ONEX, then we've got ORES, and ORES is where the minting of the decentralized stable coins, referred to as DNOMs in their system, is going to happen. All DNOMs will be collateralized by the NOM token itself and can be used for Forex trading, payment, remittance, lending, and settlement. Overall, to me, this suite of products that they made makes sense, which I'd expect considering the experience of the guys that started this whole thing back in December 2020. It was created by Lalo Batsi and Charles Dusik. Batsi is a former associate at Fidelity Investments and ex-Microsoft Cloud Solutions strategist, and Dusik is an engineer with experience in machine learning and consensus systems. According to a CoinMarketCap article, they have a 20 plus person team working on this project as well. Now into some of the tokenomics here. The NOM token does have utility and a value accrual mechanism I am happy to share. Hallelujah. Like most proof of stake systems, you can stake NOM, which grants you governance rights and earns staking awards. It can be used as collateral to mint stable coins. It's used to pay bridge fees and some of the Anami exchange revenue is used to buy NOM off the market and burn it. Importantly, the buy and burn is programmatic and done with no management by a central party nor the DAO, it just happens. Which is smart in my opinion because that will be important as regulators try to crack down that a lot of it is just programmed and there's no people behind it. We're gonna have to see though, I'm pretty optimistic. There are just so many projects and people involved with crypto at this stage. I have a hard time believing that they're gonna be able to really rein anything in. And I'm talking about like the SEC and organizations like that. It's important that they do have this burn mechanism in place because just like Ethereum and many other projects, there is no supply cap on the token. So although the NOM token has an infinite supply with enough fees generated from the exchange, it could become deflationary, which creates scarcity and hopefully creates positive price pressure. In December, 2022, the project was launched with 200 million NOM tokens, but split into two $100 million parts. So let's talk about the first 100 million first. This went to four main parties, 45% to the DAO, 20% to ecosystem support, 20% to early backers and partners, and 15% to the team and advisors. Pretty straightforward on this first half, as I'm sure you noticed, none of this went to the public. That's what the other 100 million is for, or was supposed to be for. They offered this second 100 million tokens through a bond curve offering. The way this works is that a price is set for the first token and as the tokens are bought from the contract, the price goes up. So the first token bought would be cheaper than the second and so on. This method of launching is not considered an ICO or a token launch and the tokens are minted as they are purchased. Out of the 100 million set aside for the bond curve offering, less than 3 million tokens were actually bought. And I have to imagine this is because the bonding curve price very quickly became higher than the market price. So although the BCO was meant to decentralize the project and get some coins into the hands of the public, it failed miserably in my opinion and the insiders have mostly been receiving all the emissions from those first 100 million coins that they received and staked to, to earn emissions from the protocol. It also might explain why the price has been down only mostly since at least March, 2023, which is as far back as CoinGecko goes. Although the insiders may not have been selling their total principal since it is on a vesting schedule, they, they didn't get all their tokens right away, it's likely they've been dumping their token emissions. Having a down only chart in 2022 made sense because we were in a bear market, but having a down only chart for most of 2023 during a time when Bitcoin has done almost a 3X is sort of eyebrow raising. I'm sort of speculating because I don't know exactly who is selling, but I can't figure out who else it could have possibly been. Earlier, I mentioned that only about 3 million of the tokens were sold in the BCO, the bond curve offering. That means 97 million have just been sitting idle to this point. It looks like they've decided to repurpose those extra 97 million tokens to be used as incentives for a launch pad, according to a tweet from June of this year, June, 2023. So maybe there is some upside in that. Although in the spirit of decentralization, my question is, why not just lower the BCO price so the public could buy it at a price where it makes sense? Or maybe just do an airdrop. My guess is that they've chosen to protect the price instead of trying to decentralize the token ownership. The reason I say that is because they did sell 20 million coins for $10 million in their private round, which puts it at an average price of 50 cents. 
And currently, while I record this video, the price is at 27 cents. So it's no surprise the project would choose to protect the price. And lowering it for the BCO or doing an airdrop would likely drop the price, at least in the short term. At this point, some decentralization has happened as the token emissions have been sold off, which is good. But would this be considered a fair launch in your opinion? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. They did just have a 50% token unlock a couple weeks back for the team and early investors, but the price held up pretty well and it's actually gone up over the last 30 days or so, which could be interpreted as bullish. Overall, I do think the tech is good. So could this pull an inch and reach a 2 billion plus market cap? If it did, we'd be looking at about a 100X or more from here. If you're interested in tracking my portfolio, check out the Patreon, I've got a link below for that. And if you like this review, check out this one I did recently on Joystream, which is looking to compete with YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.